Am I the a-hole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on a couch? My wife and I got married last summer. Her family lives across the country from us, so up until this point, I had never actually visited them. But I had met them a handful of times, and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come visit and stay with them for a few days, and we took them up on the offer. We flew in yesterday, and everything went well. Her dad and I watched football, while she caught up with her mom and sisters, and then we had a really nice dinner. But things went south at the end of the night when it was made clear that they didn't want me sharing a bed with my wife while in their home, and that they expected me to sleep on a couch. I honestly thought they were joking at first, but they insisted we sleep separately. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife, that I also have a bad back, and a couch did not look the least bit comfortable as they don't have a guest room. After arguing back and forth for a bit, I decided to leave and book a hotel. I told my wife she didn't have to come with me. She chose to stay and I said I'd come back the next day. I went off to a Marriott about 10 minutes away and got a good night's sleep, trying to not let the whole situation bother me. This morning, I called my wife asking when I should come by. She told me her parents want me to apologize for leaving the way I did. I told her that I'm willing to apologize to keep the peace, but they need to acknowledge that it wasn't appropriate to insist I can't share a bed with my own wife. She said she'd talk to them and call me back. About 10 minutes later, I heard back from her and she tells me that not only will they not apologize for it, they are now insisting I need to come back and stay on a couch for the rest of our visit. And if I don't agree to this, I'm not welcome back in the house. I'm pretty livid at this point. I told her that there's absolutely no chance that I will do that, and I am no longer willing to offer any sort of apology. My wife's sisters are now bothering me saying this is just the way their parents are, that my wife is very upset and that I need to just give in and stay on the couch for the rest of the trip before this turns into some sort of family feud. From my perspective, I don't care what they think, and I'm willing to treat the rest of this trip as a solo vacation, go sightseeing and meet my wife back at the airport at the end of the week. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. What kind of people are these? Are they deeply religious, right-wing evangelical types? Your in-laws are definitely the a-holes. I would never visit them again. Believe it or not, they're actually super liberal Bernie supporters. They do go to church on the regular, but I never expected this sort of behavior from them. This is unlikely to be about religion or politics then. This is about them not respecting your wife as an adult and you as her partner. Not the a-hole. Your in-laws are abhorrent hosts. It's their house, their rules, and their rules are stupid. Rather than fighting a pointless battle, you set a clear and valid boundary, and they chose to take offense to it. They want you to stay on their couch because it's a power play. You staying in a hotel takes that power away, and they can't handle it. The fact that your wife doesn't have your back on this is a giant red flag. Good luck. I just saw a similar story like this on Petty Revenge. Wait until they come visit you, offer them a place to stay, then insist your father-in-law sleep on the couch. Your house, your rules. Not the a-hole. Tell your wife you're going to book your ticket home for today. Ask her if she wants you to change her ticket to go home with you, or if she wants you to cancel it because she'd rather live with her parents forever. I thought about it, but I've already taken the week off and the weather here is much nicer than where we live. I have no problem just spending the week by myself at the beach. Next story. Am I the a-hole for insisting that I know exactly why my sister-in-law wants to come stay with my wife and I before I agree? My wife, 36 female, and I, 38 male, have been married for 10 years and have two kids, 7 and 4. My wife has a younger sister, Beth, 25 female. Beth and I don't get along very well, but we are cordial, and she's a good aunt to our kids. Beth got engaged to her high school sweetheart last summer, and their wedding is scheduled for this coming summer. But last week, my wife came to me and told me that Beth wants to come stay with us for a while. I immediately started asking questions, because Beth lives over two hours away from us and usually plans visits out weeks in advance. My wife told me that it is a personal matter and that I need to respect Beth's privacy in that regard. I asked my wife how long Beth would be staying, and she told me that she doesn't know, and that all she will tell me is that the wedding is currently on hold, and that Beth needs a place to stay for a bit. I said that if I'm going to agree to an open-ended stay from someone who I don't get along with very well, I feel like I have a right to at least know why that person is going to be staying with us. My wife told me that it's a personal matter, and that she has agreed with Beth's request to keep it private, and that if Beth wants to tell me about it, she will on her own. 
I told her that I don't really feel comfortable with that kind of plan, and that I would like some more information before I agree to it. At that point, my wife got upset with me and told me that she isn't looking for my approval, because she's already told Beth that she can come stay with us. She reiterated that I need to respect Beth's privacy on this and that she needs me to just trust her on this. I told her I do trust her, but that she's asking for a pretty big thing without giving me much information, and that I don't feel comfortable going into something like this completely blind. She said that Beth needs family support and we are the only ones who can give that to her. My wife's dad passed away during the pandemic, and her mom is already in an assisted living facility. She told me that she needs me to just be caring and kind to Beth, and to not bring up anything related to her engagement or wedding unless Beth brings it up to me first. I told her that I don't appreciate being left in the dark about something that is resulting in another adult living in our house for an open-ended period of time. She told me that she just needs me to trust her and be supportive of her sister. I kept trying to get more information, but my wife eventually snapped at me to just stop asking questions, because she's not telling me anything else, and I need to just shut up and do this for her and her sister. She did immediately apologize, but told me that she needs me to do this for her because it's important, and that she doesn't want to hear one more thing about why Beth is staying with us. I tried to ask at least how long Beth would be staying, but she cut me off and said, What the hell did I just say about questions? Not the a-hole. Everyone is acting like it's obvious what is going on, but that doesn't seem to be the case to me at all. Sister-in-law has an emergency situation that requires privacy is all you know, and I do believe you reasonably should know why she's moving in. Is sister-in-law in danger? Is sister-in-law afraid of her fiancé or suffering from domestic violence? Is sister-in-law bringing danger to your own household? Is sister-in-law coping with mental health issues? Is your own family properly equipped to provide the help that she needs while maintaining your own well-being? To me, sister-in-law needs to stay with us and the reasons are a deep secret is not sufficient. Yes, there are other plausible explanations such as cheating that are embarrassing that sister-in-law would prefer to keep private. But I believe your wife and sister-in-law should provide more information for you to form your own comfort with the situation and understand what it is you're dealing with. Not to form some moral judgment of the situation, but you deserve a say in this. This. There is a whole spectrum between we are taking a break, wedding on hold, to domestic violence. At the very least, the wife needs to come clean about what they are doing going forward, both for the husband and the kids in the house. Is the ex likely to come by looking to meet with his sister for either reconciliation or something more nefarious? Are we telling people she is staying with us or is it incognito? If the kids answer the phone and it's their uncle, who presumably they've met, what do they say? What does the husband say if he calls etc.? Those are the basic safety considerations I've had to consider in the past when friends have had to stay with us. And it doesn't need to get into who was cheating on who or other drama. Just tell him what to expect going forward is a basic courtesy, versus being so mysterious, and basically telling him he isn't authorized to know anything in his own house. Not the whole, but I'm pretty sure it is along the lines of either Beth cheating or her fiancé cheating. Also, your wife needs to understand she can't make unilateral decisions regarding things like this. Give her a deadline that Beth can stay for a week. Otherwise, she can leave the house with Beth. It's not a reason of why Beth is staying is important, but the timelines and lack of communication. That makes me call you not the a-hole, but your wife is a major a-hole. Something tells me that if it was the fiancé who had cheated, Opie would have been told that by his wife. Maybe the shameful secret is that the sister cheated, and that is why the wife doesn't want to tell her husband. Money is on the sister-in-law cheating, hence the don't ask. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take a DNA test to confirm my fiancé and I are not related because I'm uncomfortable sharing my DNA with big business? So my 27 male, fiancé 26 female is adopted. She was adopted at birth and hasn't had any contact with her birth family. She read an article a few months ago about a married couple who were both adopted and found out they were biological siblings six years into their marriage. Now, she's worried that might be us, even though I was not adopted. I've explained to her over and over again that my parents have been faithful to each other so there is no way we are siblings. She still wants us to get tested, in case there is an uncle or other relative of mine that slept around. She knows her birth mother was a prostitute and our families lived in the same major city. I think she's being ridiculous. I don't want to waste $200 on us getting tested. I don't want to have my DNA sitting on some database where it can be hacked into. I also don't want my data sitting on a website where anyone connected to my tree can find me. It weirds me out. 
I told her I wasn't comfortable with her getting tested either, because who knows what skeletons her biological family has in the closet. I don't want her to find out if she's related to bad people and then be upset. I also don't want half of my future kids' genetic makeup sitting in some confidential corporate database. I told her all of this, but she still brings it up. I may have crossed a line today. When I told her she was being disrespectful of my family by indicating one of them may have abandoned their child. She started crying and left. And now she's not answering any of my phone calls or texts. And her sister is calling me an a-hole for saying mean things about her biological family. As far as I'm concerned, they abandoned her. So they are dead to me and I don't owe them any respect. On the other hand, they're genetically related to her. So maybe by proxy I'm calling her a deadbeat too? I still don't want either of us to do the test, but I have a feeling this isn't going to blow over. So am I the a-hole if I continue standing firm and refuse to get tested? Now for the comments. You're the a-hole. Dude, you could just go to your medical provider, explain the situation and have them run a comparison. It's really not rocket science, and the results don't need to be stored or skeletons unearthed. But it is an easy way to get the answer your future wife is after unsettling her mind. As to the reasoning for the doc, we are thinking of having children and there is a valid concern that we are related. Please have our DNA compared. I didn't realize this was an option, but it sounds like a good compromise if it isn't too expensive. I'll look into it. You would have known it was an option if you had looked into options when your fiancé first mentioned her concerns. If it is this important to her, the fiancé could have done the same. You're the a-hole. I was going to go with no a-holes here, until I read your last stanza. That is plain mean, man. You are insulting her birth parents while even she doesn't know much about them. Her concerns are also more severe than yours. How could she be feeling safe and happy with you with questions like that lurking in her head? This will definitely not blow over. You'd be wiser to give in. I decided he was DA Hall when he said he doesn't want her to take the DNA test. He's allowed to be private about his own DNA, and he has to respect her choice to share her DNA and find her birth family. He's decided for her that finding her birth family is pointless. You're the a-hole. My dad was a monster. I know that fear of sleeping with a relative, and it's horrible. My father-in-law was also adopted. So knowing that we both had mystery backgrounds prompted me to join their DNA collector of choice. Especially before we have kids. Your outlook on adoption is revolting. Pretending it's some easy thing? Wow. And on top of it all, your BS reasons and why she can't do it. She has valid concerns, and you pretending your family is skeleton-free will bite you one day. Break up with her. You don't take her concerns seriously, and I wonder what other concerns you won't take seriously in the future. Opie didn't pretend it was easy. He pretended anyone who gives up their kid is a terrible person, which is so wrong. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not asking my ex for help when my daughter had her period? I do not in any way, shape, or form limit contact or communication between my ex and our kids. My ex works out of town. She works for two weeks and then gets a week off. I used to do that schedule as well, but I now work from home as a maintenance planner. When we divorced, I got primary custody of our daughter and son since I was the one available to do the parenting. I have very little interest in discussing anything with my ex. Yes, there is a lot of bitterness and recrimination in our relationship. I loved my ex with all my heart, and while I always thought she was beautiful, it wasn't as easy for other people to see. However, when you are one of a dozen women in a 2,000-man work camp, you get a lot of attention. That's all I'm going to say about that. My daughter is 10 years old, and she just got her first period. I grew up with sisters, and I'm not a complete idiot, so I had read up on what to do. I had also talked to my mom and sisters about it. I had been prepared since she was 8. I gave her the boxes of pads and tampons. I explained to her that it was normal and healthy. I watched a video with her that was a tutorial on what to do. I also asked her if she would like to talk to either my sister or the woman I'm seeing about how to do everything right. She said that she understood and would like to talk to my sister on the weekend. After dinner on Saturday, my sister talked to me about it. She said that I had gotten the basics correct and there was only a couple of things she needed to explain or correct. My ex called to talk to the kids yesterday and afterwards yelled at me on the phone. She called me an a-hole for excluding her from a milestone in her daughter's life. I asked her if it had happened during her week with the kids if she would have told me about it. She said that was the point. It was a mother-daughter thing and that I took it away from her. I said it was a parent-kid medical issue and that made it a me thing. I am a man so maybe I just don't get it. Am I the a-hole?
not Ye Hong. You handled the situation very well and managed to teach your daughter everything she needed to know, as well as redirecting her to people who could also advise her. I don't see the need for you to have immediately gone to tell your ex about her first period, especially considering that it was already happening, although it might have been nice if you told her after you figured it out. Anyway, well done. Seriously, if every father slash brother slash man treated their daughters slash sisters with such respect, the world would be such a better place. Not day whole. It's a natural and normal part of your daughter's life. You are her parent and guardian. Your daughter can decide to share that info or not. You did absolutely nothing wrong tending to her immediate needs. Exactly. With my first period, my mom told my entire family, excluding a few uncles. It was already embarrassing, and once she told me who else she told, I wanted to die of embarrassment. I completely agree that it should be up to the daughter who she tells that she got her first period. As long as one adult is told so they can teach her what is happening.